It will look at some details of the second stage of glycolysis, including a redox reaction involving the transfer of electron pairs to electron carriers, a few more regulated enzymes, and the synthesis of ATP in coupled reactions. As we go through the reactions, remember that each is occurring twice per starting molecule of glucose. In the first reaction of the second stage, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is oxidized and simultaneously phosphorylated to make a molecule of 1,3-diphosphoglyceric acid. The oxidizing agent is NAD+, which is reduced by electrons in a hydride ion to NADH. NAD+, then, is an electron carrier. The enzyme for this reaction is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. You'll see that most biological redox reactions are in fact catalyzed by dehydrogenases, meaning removal of hydrogen, because they usually involve the movement of electron pairs on either hydride ions or complete hydrogen or H2 molecules. This reaction is yet another endergonic reaction based on its energetics in a closed system under standard conditions, where delta G0 is equal to plus 1.5 kilocalories per mole. The reaction is also reversible, and it's also allosterically regulated, though in an unusual way that I'll show you in just a moment. I want to remind you about the electron carrier NADH and a few others. NADH is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and it's an electron carrier, as are its phosphorylated form, NADPH, as well as FADH2. In their oxidized forms, NAD+, NADP+, and FAD, they accept electron pairs from reduced molecules, again, either as a hydride ion or as whole hydrogen molecules. As reduced electron carriers, NADH and FADH2 have captured a significant amount of the free energy that once was in a glucose molecule. Before I describe the unusual allosteric regulation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, let's consider this question. What would a high concentration of NAD plus mean to a cell? First, it means that cells are actively respiring. It means that the cell is rapidly oxidizing NADH. And that's what's keeping NAD plus levels relatively high. You may recall that NADH oxidation fuels ATP synthesis. This happens in electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation. So high NAD plus levels must mean that the cell is actually calling for more ATP to be synthesized. How should high NAD plus levels affect the G3P dehydrogenase reaction? Clearly, it should make the enzyme catalyze its reaction faster, so that it will not be the rate-limiting reaction in the glycolytic pathway, meaning it won't be the slowest reaction in the pathway. So here's how it works. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase is made up of four identical polypeptide subunits, each with an active site able to catalyze the redox reaction. Allosteric regulation is by negative cooperativity. Let's have a closer look. After one subunit binds NAD+, the remaining subunits have a lower affinity for NAD+. That means that more NAD+, needs to be around before a second subunit will bind a molecule of NAD+. So if the concentration of NAD is high enough, another NAD+, can bind to a second subunit. But this, in turn, will lower the affinity of the two remaining subunits for NAD+, and so on and so on. What that means is, It'll take very high levels of NAD plus to bind all four subunits of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase so that the enzyme will be most active, that is to say it will reach its Vmax or maximal rate of catalysis, only when NAD plus levels are at very high or relatively very high concentrations.